the thing that comes to my mind is the word half caste, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I think I briefly mentioned it yesterday. So that's a word that we, some people use to describe people who are of mixed race um, heritage. And um, we don't like that word yeah, because. Yeah, in these countries, I always felt like, I lived in China for half a year, and I always felt like, yes, you know, I'm not from here. You can see it. I know that. But. Um, It was also not the question. And my personal approach in Germany was always to fit in, to be part of the society and not also always to be a question about that. Welcome to Mixed Heritage Press. Yes, we have a new name. Again, I'm going to talk about it at some point. Maybe I already have by the time you are watching this video. Today you have a guest. We have a guest. <laughs> you have a guest. Today we have a guest, Verdiana Albano from Institute Contemporary. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Monica. It's a pleasure to meet you and also to work with you through the project. So my name is Vadiana Albano. I studied art and did some curatorial projects and now I'm an, of course, artist and curator and uh, founded Institute Contemporary, which supports Afro-European artists um, yeah, all around the globe. But we start little um, with this exhibition in Arles, where we are right now. And yes. Yes, so we are in Arles, I should have said that, in France. Um, Verdiana, or rather Institute Contemporary, uh, had commissioned me to participate in an exhibition on the vastness of our identities. Uh, Verdiana was the, is the curator. Um, what really connects us as well is the fact that we are both Afropean, right? So I am a Polish Nigerian, grew up in Poland. You are? <laughs> Yeah, so my father is from Angola and my mother is from Germany. And it was also very important for me to search for other voices that represent the Afro-European identity. And also not to go with just one possibility of that, because as we know, Africa is a, country, uh, is a continent with a lot of countries and also Europe is a um, continent with a lot of countries. So there are multiple ways to... Uh, Yeah, be connected. Mm -hmm. And there are so many of us. We should say Afropia. (laughs) (laughs) We should say Afropia. Afropia is a country with so many different identities. So just to add to what Verdiana has just said, um, on the vastness of our identities was, is, and is an exhibition. Was, because I'm going back to London today, so I keep saying was as if it's over, but it's not. It's actually still available uh, in Arles. And um, it's a group exhibition, um, five artists participating in it. What connects all of us is that Afropean identity, um, where we pretty much live in between continents or are made of continents, right? So, Verdiana, I love your uh, collection, as you already know, uh, Nothing Half, Nothing Whole. I am going to uh, use some photos from it. You are a photographer, of course, so I'm going to use them to, uh, I'll show them on the screen. Uh, This is where I uh, went to an island and I um, tried to become one with this, um, yeah, with this island. And the whole series is done within 24 hours and it also shows how diverse is only this little island is already. And then I uh, went to another island this year and made some more um, approaches to this work where I tried to adapt the country to my body now. This is why I laid down, as you can see, on the, on the grass and I was figuring out, okay, what is the grass doing? How did your identity influence that collection? Um, please talk a little bit about that, how you decided to go to those different islands and take pictures. And I mean, I just, I, I just find it so fascinating the way you came up with the idea. And what did it do for you, um, having had done that? Like, did you feel any different about who you are? Did you feel like you knew more about yourself? I just want to know everything about that collection, nothing half, nothing whole. I love it. I love the aesthetics and I love the idea behind it. For me, um, my approach was back then in 2021 that I um, tried to figure out what um, nature does like w- with this man-made boundary. So for me, it was important to go to an island between the African and the European mainland to just have a look on how nature is doing that. If there are boundaries and are there boundaries also for the nature or are there no boundaries for the nature? It's different islands. islands. Uh, So I um, 
was at Gran Canaria, but I was also at Sardinia, which are, of course, located, uh, <laughs> if you go through it um, in, in the map, you can see it. It's also a bit um, in the west of um, Africa, but it's also really in between those um, con uh, yeah, mainlands. So for me, it was important to go there and then to try to, be to become one with this landscape and just to try it. So it's a very performative um, approach, I'm, I was not used to this back then because I was very on a straight um, documentary way to photograph. But I really, yeah, I love to do this work because it was More so personal. much about, yeah, it was so personal. It was so much about my history. I thought a lot about this, um, yeah, about the belonging in back what then. What were your thoughts? Uh, how did you feel? Even just the whole title, nothing half, nothing whole. Yeah, exactly. So this is a German saying, to be honest. Okay. But I love. Say it in German. In German. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, called nichts halbes, nichts ganzes. Okay. And uh, usually, when we do something like that, like this saying translation, everybody just laughs about this. In Germany, we, we are all like, we cannot translate it into English. Okay. But this is, it's the point for me because sometimes, of course, it makes no sense. But in this case, and it also in sense. others, yeah, it's just the words. You can just. Translates it one to one, and you will understand it. So I don't get why we shouldn't use it. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but what did it mean to you? For uh, me, on, on 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 that identity level, of course, and you know your personal story as well. Yeah. Um, back then, I I named this because um, I felt like that, right? So it was always this uh, story when I was in Germany. I was I grew up there. I had no relation to Africa, no no physical relation to Africa. I was never in Angola before, and um, the people did never stop asking me where I'm originally from. I mean, we know all this. Uh, sure. Yeah. It's, we all know that it's a, it is a boring question. It became a boring question, but. Um, of course, um, yeah, if you can see me, um, I don't look like the average, I, I, I'm not sure, not even sure if this is right, right, because we have a lot of migration in Germany and I love that, uh, it's very multicultural <laughs> and uh, yeah, I love this fact, but of course we have this stereotype of the blue eyes and the blonde hair. And uh, I don't get it, uh, actually. Most of my friends don't look like that. <laughs> yeah, but I guess, like, if you go into, as we were talking about um, some countryside, let's say in Germany, right, you probably will see people who look just that, like that, right? Like blue eyes, blonde hair. Um, not all of them, of course, but it's similar in Poland, so I totally get it. Like, we're neighbors, right? Poland and Germany. Um, so it's a very similar landscape in, in terms of race and uh, culture. It's very, um, yeah... Yeah, it's true. You uh, definitely have that in Germany, but you also have a lot of brown hairs oh and sure. curly hairs and all the stuff. But um, yeah, they, the the society doesn't adequately react to how the variety of the Germans look like. But I think probably it's also changing. Mm -hmm. But back then, because you asked for the title, it was really like I felt I'm nothing. Yeah, I'm nothing half, but I'm also Not nothing whole. whole. Yeah, it was really like there was something missing. And also yeah. in my uh, artsy practice, or uh, it was the same because I was traveling to China. I was traveling to different, <laughs> very different other countries for very big economics um, topics. But um, yeah, in these countries, I always felt like I lived in China for half a year and I always felt like, yes, you know, I'm not from here. You can see it. I know that. But um, it was also not the question. And my personal approach in Germany was always to fit in, to be part of the society and not also always to be a question about that. Mm -hmm. So it was um, hard. And you couldn't. Yeah, exactly. It, it's an impossible question at the moment mm -hmm. but it gets more and more thematized and there's also a big Afro-German um, yeah society raising up giving voices def defining themselves and I love that I love to see that it's mainly in Hamburg and in uh, Berlin but they have some um, meetings they have institutions and uh, yeah start to define that and w um, really fight for that mm -hmm. I love that I love that too, yeah. absolutely. Um, okay, so you felt like you were not half, you were not whole, somewhere in between, something was missing, right? Mm -hmm. um, the thing that comes to my mind is the word half-cast, you know? Mm -hmm. um, 
I think I briefly mentioned it yesterday. So that's a word that we, some people use to describe people who are of mixed race um, heritage. And um, we don't like that word because it indicates that we are not whole, we are half. Um, which isn't right. I mean, to me, the way I see uh, my identity, for, in for uh, my identity, for instance, is I feel like I am both, not half of anything, but both, both African and uh, European. You know, but um, okay, but I, I totally can relate to that feeling of not being complete. Like for me, coming to London um, was a little bit about that. I just wanted, I was looking for, I was searching for my African identity. And, uh, you know, I can totally relate to where you were at the time because growing up in Poland, there's just no, it's, it's very difficult to understand your Afropean identity growing up in a totally Caucasian country. Um, so for me, the first step was coming to London with, uh, you know, the vastness of identities and heritages. And I started connecting with my African um, roots first in London. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, traveling to Ghana. Um, that was my first um, trip to Africa. And I had been traveling there for the past three years. I have been traveling for the past three years on a regular basis. So it definitely, I don't know. I don't know if it necessarily did anything for me in terms of my identity as w I don't think if it I don't think this has changed me as much maybe it informed me but I'm not sure if it has changed who I am at the core uh, how do you feel about your travels to those islands and you know um, doing what you did from the artistic perspective what did that do for you did that change anything for you did you still feel like you are not half and not whole or how did you feel afterwards because obviously part of the reason i guess why you wanted to do this was to become more of who you are or understand who you are a little bit better so did you did you manage to accomplish that with your art and going to those islands and taking those pictures and stuff like that how did you feel after like give me the before and after <laughs> sorry for <laughs> no it's good it's good no i mean like um, each artistic work is a journey, right? And it doesn't stop with putting the pictures on the wall. So it's also a progress when you meet the other people, when you meet the visitors, when you can relate to your pub, to your to, to your visitors. And um, so it constantly changes. And this is also why I decided to uh, put to take more images this year to this um, series. And I went to another island between the African and <laughs> the European mainland. And um, also, yeah, tried some mo more motives about that because it's a constantly uh, changing thing. And so, yes, before or in this moment in 2021, I had this feeling like, wh where do I yeah, yeah. belong? Yeah. I had this question along, but this was along for a long time back then. But this was the moment when I really started to do work about okay. this. But um, I wouldn't say that I now know totally. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But um, to be honest, um, it just helps me to realize. And also what you said before, like, yes, I'm part of that and I'm part of that. And um, I would also say it is something new and it's totally fine that it's something new because my parents have their history and um, yeah, I have another one. And this is also why I chose not to go with archives at this po moment because I didn't want family to... Archives. Yeah, for example, fam yeah, or also public archives or travel to Angola and to Germany. I could have done the pictures in, in both the countries but this would be another approach that w this would be searching for the roots and I wanted to think about me I wanted Create to the roots or yeah but or more um, I wanted to think what what is in between separate. what is yeah what is new I yeah love that. like separate yourself mm -hmm. from um, from what had been previously, exactly. right? For Just this for this moment at yeah. least, and exactly. identify who you are independently. Of course, we are all, you know, we are all connected to roots and all that, but we are also like whole beings, full beings yeah. outside of our parents and exactly. outside of our roots. I love that actually. And this is also why I chose to go to this um, island, you know, because it's the independence. An island is oh a whole, uh, uh, yeah, I'm independent. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> I love this. I don't oh. know. It just speaks to me. It, it speaks to me. 
That's so yeah, amazing. And I had some. I showed the work now um, five times, I think, also in Berlin and in Frankfurt. And this is also what I love about this work because in the end, it's not about being half African, half European. It's about just being half and half, having different cultures, or oh, both. also yeah, both. But also, uh, people can relate that maybe a full. Turkish or something and um, Absolutely. living in Germany because it's more about the being in between cultures. This is the main point of this um, getting the struggles, thinking about um, yeah, what do I do there? What do I do there? How can I move within communities? And yeah. And having your own identity, right? Exactly. Having your own identity. Yeah. Mm. I absolutely love that. There was something I wanted to say, but I'm just getting so excited <laughs> that I forgot. No, I just love the concept and I can totally, I, I, as you know, I've already told you a thousand times, I can so relate. And I, I, I think the reason, you know, the fact that I can relate and so many people can relate, I feel like we really need this, you know. Um, this whole concept of finding yourself by going to different places, like it's nice to know that you don't necessarily have to do that because your identity Yes, of course, we have histories, our families have histories and stuff like that, but we are also independent beings yeah. uh, who can create our own destinies without relying on those histories as much as we sometimes do over rely on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So this is also a, a thing I w definitely want to point out. So um, I won't say like, oh, yeah, now I'm something new and... Uh, what was before doesn't matter, doesn't matter. that's no, not no. the fact um, it's just you have I to understand. choose on one point what you want to do for the who series you want to be as well yeah in exactly future. of course who decision, you want to be it? yeah uh, definitely and you also have to think about um, okay what probably are the traumas that are in the family there are some things that happened of course my father worked in a war um, since he was 16 so um, he fought there um, or fight it there <laughs> and uh, and um, then this was the reason he could move to Germany. So everything is connected is and this is interesting, of course. But um, in the end, I felt like at this point, before I can make a work about them or their relationship and how I was, yeah, was sourced by them, kind of, um, I needed to find my well, myself That's and this was how I wanted how I did it back then but now um, I'm also creating a new series which is way more about the um, those African uh, because it was different African countries and also Vietnamese um, um, workers that were invited to go to the uh, GBR in Eastern uh, Germany back then and so I'm also working now on a series about this and this is way more economic back to my other stuff but also very personal and I think it helped me so much, nothing half, nothing whole, helped me so much to open up this topic. Right. Yeah, to now think about, okay, and what does it mean for others, what happened in the history, and also set everything together like a puzzle. And um, yeah, so this series will release um, in August or September, but um, yeah, it wouldn't have been possible to do that without yeah. nothing half, That's nothing serious. whole. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I think um, we. I have a plane to catch, <laughs> 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 and you also still have work to do because uh, your work continues. Um, so I think we are going to close this here. I think it was. Um, I love this conversation, and I really hope that we'll have another one yeah, um, sure. at some point. I'm sure. I'm sure there'll be more opportunities to have more of these conversations. I absolutely loved it. Um, thank you so much for coming on to talk about it and for sharing a little bit of your story. Um, thank you so, so much. And yes, I mean, what is it that you would like us to know about? What is it that you do? Where can we find you? How can we support? Yes. Please share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Um, of course, you can just find me through my Instagram, through my website, visit my website. I worked hard on that. <laughs> and also on the website of institutecontemporary.com. You can just write um, us and reach out to us. We are always interested in doing projects together because we are, yeah, we mean that. We want to cooperate. We want to uh, um, research together and work together. Are because we talking to artists? 
not only artists, we're talking to artists, to um, institutions, to writers, to everybody who thinks they can bring something into this concept and yeah, help us to develop this because we are right now really starting and I want, I want to see it becoming very very great yes we are changing the world in here yes, of we course. are changing the world <laughs> Probably, <we never> know. <laughs> thank you so much for listening i really hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as i did and i hope we'll uh, talk to verdiana soon again